Seth Rollins thinks CM Punk is a cancer. John Moxley didn't want to deal with Punk's dumb S-word in AEW. And Roman Reigns might have never forgiven Punk for one comment he made all the way back in 2014. I'm Ollie Davis asking, why does The Shield hate CM Punk so much? Support WrestleTalk! CM Punk admitted in his first promo in a WWE ring in almost 10 years that he finally feels like himself again. He's with his family. He's home. But as anyone who's spent time with their family at home over Thanksgiving or Christmas will tell you, that brings with it loads of negative feelings and arguments. Now, I don't want to hear you rank Strictly Come Dancing contestants in order of who you want to have sex with the most, Uncle Ian. Grandma is sitting right next to you. And chief amongst those is Seth Rollins. In, in backstage negative feelings with CM Punk kind of way, not, not who Uncle Ian wants to have sex with. Because that's Angela Ripham. Sports Illustrated have reported that Punk's first major WWE feud will be against Rollins, which started getting built the same night Punk made his return at Survivor Series 2023. Rollins followed up by calling Punk a hypocrite on Raw, which Punk seemingly referenced in his return promo, saying how not everyone was pleased to see him back. But that's not the only seed Punk planted. Also in that interview, Punk referenced a wise man who had once told him that to get what he truly wants from WWE, a WrestleMania a main event, he'd have to leave and come back. As Dave Meltzer writes, that wise man is Punk's former WWE manager, Paul Heyman, the current manager of the biggest star in the company, Roman Reigns. According to Meltzer, Reigns vs Punk is the obvious ultimate destination. Obvious ultimate destination, title of your next premium live event, but the plan is to take a lot of time before getting there. But there is concern behind the scenes that the longer WWE waits, the higher risk Punk will get injured or get himself fired. One major star who saw the situation said that they'd better get there within six months because of the injury risk or uncertainty with Punk. But let's fantasy book the scenario where CM Punk doesn't self-destruct in WWE. He'll feud with Rollins first, potentially main eventing night four of a buy one, get one free extravaganza, and then go on to a storyline with Roman Reigns. That means in the space of two years, Punk would fight and possibly beat all three former members of the Shield for world titles. John Moxley for the AEW World Championship in August 2022, Seth Rollins for his World Consolation Weight Championship in early 2024, and then Roman Reigns after that. It's a fitting series of major feuds for his return, as, according to Punk at least, He is their father. He, he, he says he created the Shield. On arguably the most impactful wrestling shoot interview ever released, CM Punk's 2014 appearance on Colt Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast, Punk claimed the shield was my idea. Apparently, heading into Survivor Series 2012, head WWE writer Eric Pankowski told Punk they wanted him to have a faction, pitching Big Show and Daniel Bryan as its members. Punk didn't like the idea, but said he'd be willing to do a heel faction if it helped elevate some younger talent in FCW, which was WWE's developmental promotion before NXT. The names he chose were Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Chris Hero, who was called Cassius Ono in WWE, whom Punk had known from his days in Ring of Honor. WWE accepted on one condition. They don't need a hero! They wanted Roman Reigns. They came to me and they were like, what about Roman? It wasn't my hill to die on. I said, sure, because it made sense to me. Punk never originally wanted Reigns in the shield. Remember that for later. Seth corroborated Punk's claim in a 2019 appearance on Edge and Christian's Pod of Awesomeness. Punk was looking to help turn the main roster around, so he wanted to get us in there, us being myself and Ambrose, and I think maybe Cassius Ono Chris Hero, but I'm not sure. But the company loved Roman from the get-go and for all the right reasons. Moxley revealed the same at StarCast 4 also in 2019, confirming The Shield were meant to be a stable for Punk and that they used to travel on his bus early on, where he would give them advice until WWE split them up on the road. Punk didn't only create the concept of The Shield, he directly mentored Rollins, Reigns and Ambrose in their very beginning. But like all good student-teacher narratives, the students would eventually seek to defeat their master. Because shortly after those 2019 interviews, we got our first public falling out between Punk and a member 
of the Shield. Late 2019 was a bad time for Seth Rollins. He would settle arguments on Twitter by talking about how much money he had in his bank account despite being a babyface on screen. And in October that year, he beat The Fiend in one of the worst creative decisions ever made, causing fans to turn against him. Presumably trying to get excitement around him again in November, ahead of that punk WWE return we don't talk about, hosting WWE backstage on Fox, Seth started calling out punk for a fight on Twitter. Punk chose to respond with a promo on WWE Backstage. This isn't the show where you shoot your angles. Seth needs to stop tweeting and realize that sometimes it's better to be viewed as the fool and shut your mouth or open your mouth and remove all doubt. You're not doing yourself any favors. Go search for relevancy somewhere else, Seth. Seth responded on Twitter with hell of a response. Eyes looking up sarcastically emoji coward. Rollins later said in an interview he was just trying to coax Punk back into the ring. But then, in February 2023, Seth's comments to Nick Houseman suggested something had irreparably changed between them. Philly Phil, stay away. Stay away, you cancer. Get away from me forever. Wow. Yeah, no, I don't like Phil. I don't like Phil. He's a jerk. Oh, did we just figure that out? Did we just figure that out? No, everybody in the room like is like, oh no, dude, did he say that? Yeah, no, he's a jerk. Come on, we figured it out over there. We knew it over here. I don't want him back. Go do something else. Bye bye, bye bye. See you later. A week later, Rollins explained to Fox Sports Radio why he now sees Punk as a cancer. That guy has given my career so much that it pains me to have to say bad things about him because he helped me out. He really did. He's been a good guy to me for a lot of my career, but for, for whatever reason, the past maybe six, seven years, he's in a different headspace and we're not on the same page. And to see kind of what he's done and taken and taken and taken, it's always been about him. I'm not a fan. I'm just not a fan. Well, I'm not a fan. Unfortunately, of it. people people change. It happens. It uh, does happen. Unfortunately. Well, there's uh, a place for him, man. He's got a lot to give. I just wish, uh, wish his head was in the right spot. The month after Seth's cancer comments about Punk, another former Shield member came out against him. AEW summer of 2022 was a mess. Punk had to vacate his AEW world title shortly after winning it from Hangman Page, so the ever-dependable John Moxley stepped in as interim champ. The storyline saw Mox squash Punk in his return match, which built to a longer rematch at All Out, where Punk won back the title. Dave Meltzer would later report that Punk agreed to those plans, but then AEW got a lead letter saying he wasn't down with it and wasn't doing it. Punk only came in when Tony Khan put his foot down. In response to Meltzer's report, Punk did the 2023 version of a shoot pipe bomb, posting a long piece of text on his Instagram story, claiming he wasn't clear to wrestle yet, that Meltzer and Chris Jericho were liars, that Mox said he wouldn't lose to him, and most shockingly, he'd never seen a Rocky movie, which was what the Mox storyline was based on. Fightful reported this caused significant heat between Moxley and Punk backstage. And if AEW had to choose between them, they'd go for Mox. But why believe Fightful when Mox himself went on his real-life wife Renee Paquette's podcast to shoot on Punk's social media post? It's f***ing annoying. Just because somebody said some stupid shit on social media, that's not news, but it is, and it's become a thing. I don't want to get dragged into this dumb shit. I could f***ing unload on a lot of people right now. When I start getting dragged into this shit, it tempts me to do that. But I'm not going to f***ing sink to that level. I don't want any negative bullshit. I will say this, and I hate to say it because I don't think I've ever said anything even remotely negative about AEW, but I will say this. As an observer, I spent eight years on the indies, a couple of years in WWE developmental, eight years in WWE. I have never seen so much bullshit drama in one place in my entire life. It's important to note how rare it is for Moxley to say something publicly like this. That's how much Punk's behavior must have gotten to him at the time. But maybe there's also a long gestating underlying cause to Seth and Moxley's heat with Punk. Maybe it's that Punk inadvertently upset their big dog shield teammate many, many years ago. And here we get to it. The potential rosebud in the CM Punk Shield drama. The throwaway line that might have accidentally caused a decade of hate. Why Roman Reigns doesn't like CM Punk. 
When it was first been reported by House of Wrestling that Punk might return to WWE, Fightful reported, There is a very big elephant in the room in that both Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns have verbalized in the past that they aren't fond of Punk. Most people on both sides believe there would need to be fences mended there in order to make a successful return happen. Roman had shot on Punk two years earlier, in 2021, during an interview with Complex, when he was asked about a Punk return. On a personal level, it doesn't do anything for me. That's not going to elevate me at all. He's older now. I haven't really seen a full match. I've seen a clip or two. And to me, a step or two has been lost. Then also, he got his whooped in the UFC. I don't think anybody really believes someone 200 pounds soaking wet with no explosive bone in their body could ever really do anything to me. Sure. Maybe just a kayfabe badass response from Roman in character. Or maybe it masks a deeper held dislike of Punk, which once again can be traced back to the shoot interview that is still having ripple effects today, the 2014 Art of Wrestling podcast. Despite starting 2014 incredibly hot, equaling the Royal Rumble's elimination record, a match most fans wanted him to win, the rest of the year went downhill for Roman Reigns. Seth turned on him in June, breaking up the shield, Reigns was pushed hard into the main event, which started to turn fans against him, and then he required surgery in September, taking him out for the rest of the year. By the January 2015 Rumble, which he won, he was getting booed heavily. And it might have been somewhat fueled by a story Punk told on the Art of Wrestling podcast just two months beforehand. Punk spoke about his three-on-one handicap match against The Shield at TLC 2013, which Punk won. He started planning out the match, but every two minutes, someone new was coming up to me. Hey, you gotta make Roman look really strong. So I got sick of Michael Hayes and everybody else coming up to me, people who aren't even involved in the match, going, hey, you're making him look really strong, right? And I finally said, you know what? You know what would make them look really strong? If they beat me, because three guys can't beat one guy, that's f***ing dumb. But no, no, Vince wants you to go over. Okay, but but you gotta make him look, God damn it, I f***ing get it. I know how to do the job, shut the f*** up. Rather tragically, Punk, wasn't criticizing The Shield or Roman. He was criticizing an objectively terrible creative decision, which was a major gripe with WWE at the time. But those comments, along with Punk revealing he originally wanted Chris Hero in The Shield, not Reigns, were made at the exact same time fans were starting to turn on Roman. Make Roman look strong confirmed what many people were feeling that management were pushing Reigns down fans' throats. And it became an unofficial catchphrase for the anti-Roman movement. Perhaps in Reigns' mind, Punk indirectly fueled the next five years of crowds booing him. But as they say, this is the pro wrestling business, not the pro wrestling friendship. Many, many wrestlers who hate each other have still gone on to work matches, probably many more than we'll ever know. They're professionals. They do a job very well to make money. I'm sure everyone's got people they don't get along with at work, but they still do the job. Pro wrestling, despite all its pyro and ballyhoo, is the same. So this heat won't stop Punk and The Shield working together. Punk already worked a program in AEW with Mox, and he'll work his first WWE feud with Seth Rollins. They don't have to like each other to work together. And, as Roman himself also said in that 2021 interview with Complex, if our audience wanted to see me versus Punk and they were clamoring for it, couldn't shut up about it, and all the stars aligned as a businessman and as a performer who was trying to seek out the very best for the audience and try to captivate, I wouldn't say no. What do you think of The Shield and CM Punk? Let me know in the comments. And go watch me list every time CM Punk shot on WWE before he returned there. Turns out, really recently. He was doing it just last year over on Parts Fun Note.